Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Valet stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Valet is a mining and logistics company. It is the largest producer of iron ore and nickel in the world. 98% of iron ore is used to make steel. Steel is used in many things such as roads, bridges, medicine, auto parts, etc. The Evergrande crisis will really hurt this company since China imports 75% of the world's iron ore. We're going to talk more about this later when we value the company. Nickel is used to resist corrosion and it's used to plate other metals to protect them. It is a very important material for the batteries that are used in electric vehicles. It is also used in kitchen products, mobile phones, medical equipment, buildings, and jewelry. The company also produces manganese, ferroalloys, copper, bauxite, potash, kaolin, and cobalt. It operates nine hydroelectricity plants and a large network of railroads, ships, and ports used to transport its products. The company uses its massive Valley Max vessel to ship products across the ocean. By doing all the shipping, it increases its margins by not sharing any of the profit with the middleman. The company is headquartered in Rio, Brazil and was founded in 1942. It started trading in 93 and can be found on the New York Stock Exchange, Spanish Bolsa, Sao Paulo, Mexican Bolsa, Deutsche Börse, Buenos Aires, and London Stock Exchange. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, 72 billion market cap. They're trading at 14.49 a share and they have 5 billion shares outstanding. Let's look at their financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see their free cash flow is really high, over $9 billion in 2018 and almost $10 billion in 2020. When they had $10 billion of free cash flow in 2020, I thought that was amazing. And now it's up to over $21 billion. That is just unreal. Free cash flow is a cash that's remaining after paying all of your expenses and investing back into your business. So it's a cash that's left over for you, the investor. A free cash flow margin over 9% is considered amazing. Free cash flow margin is free cash flow over market cap. Their free cash flow margin is 30%. I don't know if I've ever seen it this high before. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And that also goes up a ton from 7 billion to 17 billion. Revenue is a sales for the company and that grew from 37 billion to 55 billion, their highest ever by far. There's been so much demand for the metals they produce and the prices of those metals have gone up a ton the past few months. That's why they're making so much money. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales, Here's a breakdown of their 2020 revenue. So you can see almost 80% of their revenue comes from iron ore. And China imports 75% of the world's iron ore. So that's gonna really affect this company. Of course, due to the looming bankruptcy of Evergrande, if that company does go bankrupt, that's gonna really hurt the Chinese economy and even the world economy. 12.5% of their sales are from nickel and 5% from copper. And you can see here, they're the largest producer of iron ore in the world. Rio Tinto is a little behind them. Below revenue is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue, the cost of labor, also the cost to mine its products, and also the cost to transport the products. And that could be by railroad, vessel, or whatever conveyance they're using. Revenue minus cost of revenue gives you your gross profit. And that was huge in the trailing 12 months, 34 billion. Below that is operating expenses. Depreciation is a big operating expense for this company. And below that is their operating income. That more than doubled from 2018. They do have a good amount of debt on their balance sheet. They paid $3.4 billion of interest on their debt. And the bottom line of the income statement is their net income. And that was huge, almost $17 billion. That's more than the sum of the 2018, 19, and 20 net incomes. This is the company's statement of cash flow. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash is remaining after operating a business. And they had $26 billion of operational cash flow. They do invest about four to four and a half billion a year in CapEx. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. And that's the cash that's remaining for you, the investor. So they can use that money to pay a dividend, buy back stock. They bought back two billion in the trailing 12 months or to pay down debt. Let's look at the capital structure, 42 billion of equity, 
19 billion of debt. They're 69% equity, 31% debt. Their net debt is 4 billion, so they have a lot of cash on their balance sheet. And their weighted average cost of capital is 10.5%, and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 108 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $107 billion. We divide that by 5 billion shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 2148. They're trading at 1449. So they're trading at a 33% discount. It's a buy according to the model. According to Simply Wall Street, the average analyst projected their revenue to decrease 12.4%. So to calculate their 2021 revenue, I decreased their trailing 12 month revenue by 12.4%, then decreased it 12.4% each year after that until 2024. And to calculate their future free cash flow, I needed to figure out what percent of their revenue they convert to free cash flow. So I summed up these four free cash flow numbers and then divided by the sum of these four revenue numbers. And that was 29%. So they convert 29% of their revenue to free cash flow. So I multiplied these four revenue numbers by 29% to get their future free cash flow estimates. The reason analysts are projecting their revenue to decrease is mainly because of the Evergrande situation. It seems likely the Chinese economy will take a big hit, and that's going to really hurt this company. Just the other day, UBS downgraded this company from a buy to a sell. And they are projecting EBIT to decrease 13% to 17%. EBIT is earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. It's pretty close to operating cash flow. Simply Wall Street values the company pretty much where they're trading at. Eight analysts priced this stock and the average price target was 2131, which is really close to my price target. This is where the stock has been trading since 2017. You get a really nice dividend with this stock. To give you an example, Say in the middle of 2017, you bought the stock around here. And in the middle of 2020, you sold the stock here. So that's three years later, and the stock price didn't move. But you actually got 6 to 8% dividend yield each year, which is about 18 to 24% in dividend. When you look at the historical stock price for a company that pays a high dividend, it's not too volatile, the stock. Since they pay out a lot of the profits out as dividends, it keeps the stock pretty steady. For instance, if it didn't pay any dividends, you would see the stock price shoot way up. But you can see it was fairly steady for three years. But if you bought it any time around here, you got all those dividends. And then if you held up here, not only did you get all those nice dividends, but you also got really good stock appreciation. So you won on both ends with this company. Hopefully you sold it up here because with the whole China fiasco, there's been a huge sell-off and the stock came way down. And who knows how low it's going to go. I have a feeling it's going to hit about 8 or $9, which was the resistance point in the first quarter of 2020. But if you buy it here, I don't think it's a bad investment as long as you're willing to hold for a few years. The market is forward thinking and they do things irrationally. If there's really good news on a stock or an industry, investors keep buying the stock till it goes way higher, much higher than it should. And if there's bad news about a company, like in this situation, the demand for iron ore should go down a lot if China goes into a recession. People get really scared and they sell, sell, sell and push the price a lot lower than it should have went. So people go to the extremes. So try to pick up the stock when it gets really low and try to sell the stock when it gets really high. I know that's easier said than done. It was a little tricky calculating their dividend because in Yahoo Finance, they reported their last three dividend payments were in March of 77 cents, June of 44 cents, and $1.56 in September. You can see how much more the September dividend was than the prior dividends. This is called a special dividend. A special dividend is paid one time and it's not recurring, so you can't expect this $1.56 in the future. Not many companies pay special dividends, and even fewer companies pay more than one in their lifetime. It's usually the result of an excess amount of cash. Like for instance, if a company won a huge lawsuit and won like $100 billion, they may give a special dividend to the investors since they have so much cash that came in. In Valet's case, their earnings were through the roof, so they had so much extra free cash flow, so that's why they paid a special extra dividend. So to calculate their dividend yield, I pulled out $1 from their special dividend, and I assumed they would have paid $0.56 cents because last September they paid $0.46. Cents. So I calculated 12.16% dividend yield, and that's what's stripping out a dollar. Yahoo Finance reports a 19% dividend, and other websites also report 
you should not include the special dividend as part of the dividend yield because it's not recurring. You can't expect to receive that next year. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago and reinvested the dividends, you have about $10,000 today. So 2011 was a bad time to invest in this company. If you invested in the stock when the company was trading at that low point around 2017, and say you invested $1,500 into the stock, you'd be at $10,000 today. You would have seven x your money. Sometimes investing in a stock market is about getting lucky. If you get a big inheritance right when the market crashes, you got lucky because you could put your money into the market when it's low. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than smart. Capital Research owns 24% of the stock. Banco do Brasil owns 9%. BlackRock, Banco Berdesco owns 5.8%. Then Mitsui, the Japanese company, owns 5.7%. Let's look at their financial ratios. Look at these price multiples. Unbelievable. A 4.3 price to earnings ratio. And this is a huge company. To have such a good P.E. ratio is just unreal. Price to sales of 1.3, price to book of 1.7. These ratios are so good, not just because their stock price has come down in the past couple of weeks, it's because their financials are unbelievable. They have a return on invested capital of 54%. They can cover their interest payments over nine times. They have an ROE of 40%. Unbelievable ratios. They have a good current ratio at 1.8, a good quick ratio at 1.4, and they have 15 billion of cash on their balance sheet, 5.6 billion of receivables, and 4.7 billion of inventory. So they're more than well capitalized. They generated over 21 billion of free cash flow in the trailing 12 months. They have over 11 billion of working capital, and they paid out 9 billion of dividend payments. So they have almost 24 billion dollars of funding. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos of nine companies in the same industry as Valet. And if Valet has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in blue, they're better than the average. They have amazing price multiples. They're much better than average in PE, price to sales, and price to book. They have a good current ratio, really high ROE. They're doing fine in debt. And they're a big company, 72 billion market cap. The biggest is BHP. The second biggest is Rio Tinto and they pay the largest dividend by far. To summarize, I have them trading at a 33% discount, but I still think this stock price will come down more because people tend to panic sell, because people are talking more and more about the Evergrande situation. And it doesn't matter what the result is, it could be really bad or it could be not so bad, the stock price will go down, mainly due to panic selling. But you don't wanna to wait too long because nobody knows when the bottom is. And if you wait too long, say your price point is $10 and it goes down to $10.50 and then shoots way back up to $20, $30 over the next couple of years, you will be annoyed that you missed out on all that upside. But for a long-term play, this is a great company and precious metals are getting more and more important these days, especially with electric vehicles and other green initiatives. I rank their free cash flows, revenue, and ratios 10 out of 10. This is the first time I gave a company all 10s. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. If you want to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.